Are you ready? What's my name? What's my, what's my name? What's, say Kareem Miley. Say Kareem Miley. You're listening to the Hip Hop Debate Show. Okay, so hear me out. The official podcast of Kareem Miley. In about two seconds, Kareem Miley will begin to speak. Around. I just wanted to look at Right, that. right. Was this Wu Tang versus Drake? Jizzle no. versus Wu well, Tang? I get this nigga. Kareem Ali TV, the All You Serious podcast coming at you live. We're not live, it's pre recorded. I wore the same shirt for the last seven and a half episodes. <laughs> like, <laughs> change my glasses a little. You know, I think I wore this for a music video too. Shit. I need to get some new clothes. Listen. Kareem Ali TV, the All You Serious podcast, as I said before. My guy from Pittsburgh, Slankston Hughes, a.k.a. the Lyrical Leviathan, a.k.a. the Lonious Cold Train, a.k.a. I don't know what, how many the of them, the nigga, with, the nigga who used to brush his shit at the top. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> My man, Jammer One, the Wu-Tang shirt, hip-hop producer, MC, live performer extraordinaire, the guy. And my guy, the Ill Ty Hill, the Cards Face Up podcast. Incredible. Make you subscribe. <laughs> got to subscribe <laughs> to a show. And, and, and listen to some of his records too, man. He has some, he's got like a million music videos. Ty Hill is dope, man. I'm trying to tell you. It's amazing I, that people, say like, word. all of us are uh, MCs, former MCs, poets, whatever we do. And nobody really know who the fuck anybody is. <laughs> Baltimore is crazy. <laughs> that's, the, that's the beauty Baltimore of Baltimore is insane. Insane. That's the, that's As Kareem once said in a, in, a, in a very infamous verse, to a very dope song. You know, this is the spot where Satan landed, so, you know. God damn. That's, that's Lucifer it. landed here, so, you know. Why like, do you say that's the beauty of it, Ty? You, you was about to say something. I stepped on your stage. Just just because Baltimore is a melting pot. You feel me? So many different places, and um, it, it's so many broken down years. You know what I'm saying? Like, separated in years and clicks and things of sort. Again, I think that might have been a reason why it didn't blow as big as it should, but... Hip hop wise, man, we a dope motherfucking place, man. This this shit is. There is talent there. It's so a lot. A, of a melting pot full of crabs, but those crabs refuse to die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we have we have wonderful times and stages, though, Slangston. I mean, the Five Seasons yeah. era. Uh, the, the we've we've had some wonderful times. I've seen you down um, uh, Howard Street. What the fuck was that shit used to be called? You remember? Uh, you talking about uh. The 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 joint that was like right next to where the vault used to be. Yes, yes. yeah, yeah. Mike life, the, the the crazy Mike life at the upper deck days. We've had some. Oh <laughs> man, the upper deck. The, it, it's upper wonderful deck. times here. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, yeah, I, think, I think we're in a, a a resurgent, wonderful kind of time in Baltimore artistically right now. For real, for real. Like I think you know, with that, with the beneath beneath the beat documentary coming out, with coming out the Dark City joint, it's, it's a lot of attention. It's a lot of attention on Baltimore right now, creatively. And I think that as we move into this post-pandemic world, um, the the time is right for dope shit to rise to the surface. Well, business-wise, we getting better. I mean, I'm gonna say they getting better. You feel me? Like you talking about with the uh, documentary that's on the big stage, like Netflix. Then you also got a. Uh, they just now got the credits for the Space Jam 2. They got a song on the soundtrack and played, I think, a couple seconds yes, on the um, yes. movie. Man, you know, it's shit. Last thing we had on the movie was probably fucking Be Rich and Woe Now, I mean, um, Woe Now on Cookout right, right. with Ja Rule. <laughs> and oh, not the shit. cool version with the Good Times sample. Oh, it was some but, other But the, uh, <laughs> yeah, they had, they, because of the, they couldn't clear it, so they had the, to the, kind of change the, the we song. We couldn't afford the cleared version. <laughs> right, right, right. Not good times. It all. wasn't good times. It was uh the other show. So let's get to the topic of the day. My guys, uh, we got two classic MCs that we're pitting head to head, and um they've been talking a little shit about each other during the versus era when this uh the whole versus thing came out. We have on one corner the blastmaster, the teacher, knowledge reigns supreme over nearly everyone. Karis one, and on the other corner we have the greatest lip licker of all time. Uh, <laughs> ladies love, yeah, you know what I'm saying, baby. <laughs> his own the liquor of his own lips, <laughs> his own, <laughs> the swollen headpiece. Todd James, what the God fuck? James. 
Goat. My God. Ladies love Cool James. Time. The self proclaimed goat. Ladies love Cool yeah. James. LL yes. Cool J is hard as hell. Hell. And this this is not necessarily an easy one. They're, they're two different MCs with two uh, different approaches. They both had uh, very long careers, at least 20 year careers in, in terms of putting out albums in their catalog. They've probably been around for 30 years now, but I'm talking about when they were in the heat of it putting album after album out like every two years, a good 20 years. In 1985, LL Cool J might have been the best MC in the world at that point. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and he was just, like 16. He was like 16. Came in the room like box. But there's also, by all means necessary, the criminal minded one. Over nearly every KRS one return of the boom back. Step into the step into the rapture. Uh man, the teacher. The guy who I kind of sound like in my vocal intonation, I try not to, but I can't help it. My character's one impersonation. Yeah, you got to give us a little bit of the of the Chris. Blast master Chris, I don't talk ish. Expand your consciousness and dismiss foolishness. Look at this man to this all new to Chris in hip hop's atomic structure. Oh, I am man. the nucleus. I, you know, he's going Look at my nose. I even take more nerve right. than you. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know Stop right there. You know, to start teaching and talking <laughs> and shit. Slice, so who's the better MC? Is it is it KRS oh, One? Is it LO Cool J? Who will win in the versus battle? KRS One said that no. in the versus battle, LO Cool J won't survive. <laughs> Yo, and ver- it's funny in a versus <laughs> battle, it would actually be very interesting depending on the crowd. Because when you're just talking about like definitive hip hop records, Chris has a gaggle of them. Um, but then if you're talking about like, you know, crossover records that he has some R and B appeal to him, then LL Cool J has a cornucopia of them. So um th- I'll say this this much about LL Cool J. Never at any point in his career could you sleep on that motherfucker as an MC, including right now. If you look at some of the stuff that he's put out, like when he just like when he did the video spawned into the racial injustice and or when he just puts out a, a like I'm gonna spit these verses and y'all gonna listen to them on my page like lyrically LL is still as sharp as ever and has even updated his writing technique even more to today's standards of like what is a dope ass verse like I'm an internal rhyme external rhyme like he's still rhyming his ass off right now um, in a way that people aren't even aware of necessarily. Um, a funny story someone told me about LL Cool J back in the day is that when Ultra Magnetic MCs had dissed him, they had a record where Cool Keith had a verse where he um, had basically like he went at like a bunch of people who was popular at the time, Chris, Chris Slick, Rick, a couple of people all in the verse, and then they would go on a show, and LL came to the show stood in the front row in a b-boy stance and was just like staring at these niggas like yo i should serve you suckers right now (laughs) like 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 i want to just come on stage interrupt the show and fuck y'all up like like ll never backed down never took shorts even when he was making those crossover singles on his albums you know like who do you love and doing it and doing it he was always prepared to take whoever on in a battle and it has not changed with that being said, KRS One is the answer to the question. Um, if people really listen to his catalog, including recent albums he's dropped, you what you'll notice is that the rhyme is still as strong as ever. KRS One is still definitively one of the top five MCs who have ever lived, and the caveat beyond that that makes him such a threat against anyone is that if you stand on stage across from Paris one and y'all rap against each other, freestyle or pre-prepared, there are very few human beings on this planet who can deal with that shit. And I don't even think LL Cool J could. It would be very interesting. LL Cool J would be very prepared, but I think Chris would be more prepared because this is what, this is what the fuck Chris Parker lives for. He wants someone to come on stage. He dares them to come on stage and go against him. He will relish in the opportunity to be like, oh, I might be old, but if we see each other in the in the supermarket, milk goes down, right. eggs go down, and it's on. Like, so I think it would be Chris who would have the advantage. And I think Chris overall is the cumulatively the greater MC. It's almost impossible to keep LL out of any top 10 conversation. I think that 
it's impossible to keep Chris out of any top five or top three conversation. Jamma really one, Jamma one, my guy. What do you say to that? KRS one or LL Cool J? Yo, this is so hard. <laughs> this is so hard. This is so so hard. Um, KRS one to me is like a mentor. You know, greatest the greatest that ever done it easily. Easily, you know what oh, I'm thanks. saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? It's like my man said, you know, you stand on stage beside KRS-One, you know, it's going to go down. But we talking about verses, okay? And I agree, it depends on the audience or the crowd who's listening. This is, this is real tough because on one end, LL Cool J got he got those records with that mass appeal. You know what I mean? He got records that you can't front on, like front Cars on. Ride By with their booming system, like um, Jingling Baby, I'm Bad. You know, he got chick joints, joints that the women love. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, if they, do, if they go head to head and the DJ is playing, I don't know if KRS One in his catalog, which he do, he had some hard songs, but he don't have the women the way LL Cool J have the women, and yo, like that is a, that is a very important factor when you when you battle it. You know what I mean? Like he got that, those, in terms LL of Cool just, got those big records that'll just that'll hit. Are they, we take some hit. of the commercialism out and we talk about just uh artistic ability, the level of skill from a rhyme standpoint, from a hip hop stand, a hip hopery standpoint, as Ty, Ty Hill uh <laughs> coined that phrase. Um who who would would you would you think Karis what has a better chance? You think you, you think LL will win in a versus battle? Who would win in an actual battle? Ball for in ball. the actual battle, I would give it the KRS. Only for one reason and one reason only. I have never heard LL Cool J freestyle. So I don't know how LL Cool J would do in a, in, on a, in like the heat of the moment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where LL is a beast. And he could probably put some writ, put some writtens down that will, you know, have KRS reaching for his stuff. But if you don't, if you in a battle as an MC and you can't come up with those spur of the moments, those, those special lines that'll push you over the edge straight off the top of the head you're gonna have a hard time in the battle especially with krs so if we talking about mcn i would give it to krs <laughs> time i'm gonna give you the floor brother what would you say mm -hmm. hello cool j or the blast master krs one the teacher well 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 brother kareem uh <laughs> i would love if, i would love if you go first <sighs> yeah. can we get you spot. to go first i really you, <laughs> The problem is, I really, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm going it's to tough, lean. Right? <laughs> it's, it's tough, tough because thing. I have to get, I mean, the, the hip hoppery in me leans automatically goes towards KRS One, the keep it real, hardcore lyricism, the conscious rhyme, the topic, that the nature of those, of his songs kind of draws me in more. I've been a, I've always been a big KRS One fan, but I've always liked LL Cool J as well. LL Cool J could rap rap. I don't think he'd be cannabis in that battle. I never did, but I, but his ability, so to, his ability to go hard and want to battle everybody there ever was. Cool Mo D, well, Cool Mo D thought he was the best MC in the world. LL had the newer style. He battled against Mo, Mo D, didn't care. The guy's about 18, 19 years old. Just the heart, the ego, the belief, the confidence, almost the time. Even his laugh irritates me. Because it's like the ego of LL Cool J. It's like, come on, baby. We on the Cayman Islands. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just, he, the guy's fucking annoying to believe. I mean, he, he he doesn't just believe he's the greatest of all time. He knows he is. He scoffs at the notion of someone that will put Jay-Z on a level above him. I deeply respect LL Cool J and always has the ability to make to make songs that cross over and still make hip-hop records for the streets. And for the hip hop mm -hmm. enthusiasts, that's a skill where you can do it over and over again. If you have pop success and you can continue to create those type of records over and over and over again throughout your career, you got to give him credit. 
Um, and I think it will be it will be close, uh, but I still think that KRS One has a slight advantage in this conversation. And it, for me, it's because of the the level of content that he brings. I think that's just harder to do when you're talking about you know uh, spirituality, politics, black empowerment, those type of that type of subject matter. Then able to rhyme it and break it down so that other people can get it. I will go with KRS One because of that, and also the live. Because LL Cool J is a great live performer as well, but KRS One put on the greatest live hip hop show that I've personally ever seen. Freestyling mm -hmm. on the spot, uh, a fucking pointer with a with a like pointing against a, a board, teaching niggas about stuff in Africa and parts on the map and break dancing going on at the same time when he's rhyming. Just the hypeness of the show, the level of it. It was like, man, you know, the only other person I've seen like that was maybe Busta Rhymes himself. So I'm going to go with LL Cool J. I mean, I'm going to with KRS-One by, by, by a little bit, but I'm going to go with KRS-One. He's It's amazing that he doesn't get the respect he deserves anymore. At one point, he was number one or number two greatest of all time. And now, in a lot of people's lists, he's not even top 25. I don't know when that happened. But I'm going to... He's, he's got to be at least... Um, as Vic said, uh, a top five MC, but because of LL Cool J's impact, I can't keep LL out of the top ten greatest rappers of all time, but Karen no doubt is at least top five or six all time, in my opinion. Ty Hill. Okay. <laughs> I know what I you're would, doing here. I would like to start off first by saying when I'm alone in my room, <laughs> sometimes I stare at my wall. And in the back of my mind, I hear my conscience call. They're telling me I need a girl who's as sweet as a dove. And for the first time in my life, that's when I saw I needed love. I say that to say this, and this is one argument of hip hop. Uh, when, whenever I'm near people who can lyrically also spit, they fucking hate this conversation and my answer to it. I do not like KRS-One music. I have never <laughs> fucking like KRS One music. Almost had a brain aneurysm. Head to the fucking show. Get I just don't. It's not one of those things. Love's gonna get you is one of the best fucking songs I've ever heard in my life. Uh then we have uh, uh um 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 the police. Uh, of the police. That's a sound of the police. Of the police. Black cop. Now I'm swaying off. After that, I'm done. <laughs> I'm that not like they don't know. I'm not a big fan. MC now like we're we're coming from a fucking hip hop culture, and it's it's literally like when I tell people this, and then they hear me rap after. Like once once we have this conversation, they really don't want to hear me rap. <laughs> it's like there's no way you can fucking rap if you don't like KRS One. All that shit I said they, before about you, I'm taking it back. I ain't listen to <laughs> No, but then they that's what's funny though. Then they find out, like I, you know, I, I started off battling and shit like that, and they be like, wow, you can actually rap. And how don't you like one of the greatest of all time? I fuck y'all up even worse right now. I think Nelly beat the fucking beef. I, I fucking don't like KRS One music. I don't care. I'm, I don't oh. care. Oh. I've had certain conversations I've had so many times that I'm used to the way y'all motherfuckers looking at me. I don't. I can skip, <laughs> Bayless, I can skip Bayless face like. <laughs> yes, like, country grandma, fucking Nelly, fucking uh, what, what the fuck did it? <laughs> I am number one. Whatever the fuck. Tip drill. Nelly's actually the, way first, better than a whole lot of rappers in the mainstream right now. Oh, Nelly? Yeah. Nelly was fucking Nelly. dope. I don't care what nobody say. Whatever. But. Oh, man. Back to this shit. And KRS1 is crazy. I don't know why. We from a, a, a battle era, I mean, a battle world where, you know, you're supposed to be the nicest and have so much confidence. His confidence really makes me want to punch him in his mouth. <laughs> it fucking doesn't work for me. Well, I mean, I think him and LL both are pretty much an even match when it comes yeah. to the ego. <laughs> not, not him. I, I remember, man, one time, man, and I I, I, I remember the whole, uh, I got a battle rap written for every, the top five. That should have been like, yeah, that should have, and then hip hop eyes, I should have been like, yes, that's how you do it. <laughs> to me, it was like, shut the fuck up. 
Like, I swear. <laughs> I don't believe it. Quote cannabis. You got to rap for everybody. Go get it. <laughs> now, when we, <laughs> when we talk about LL Cool J, I also agree. <laughs> LL did lose the cannabis beef. But when we talk about LL Cool J, we talk about the you, you, reinvention, you, 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 you me back. <laughs> the reinvention of a human being in music. LL did not come out with, I mean, you know, we could talk this commercial shit and the girls and cars ride by with, well, we, that, well, that wasn't it. But anyway, we could talk about the commercial shit as far as, but LL came out, I'm bad. LL came out with some gangster, some, 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 some hardcore rap shit. I mean, that first movie. You mm -hmm. Yeah, you feel me? Like they can't, well, no, nah, that was, that was later too, because that was thick LL. You feel me? Um, the first LL Cool J is the Kango, the the no rapper could rap. You quite like I can. I take a you feel me? Like the, the coolest fucking. I think the first CD was. I mean, the first record was the one with the uh uh the the, the animal on it. What the fuck was it? Leopard or some shit? Not walking. Oh, that was, was the third. Panther. That was yeah, third album. Okay, the, fucking, the first one just had just had the, the boom box. It was red. His first album was called Radio, right? Was it Radio? All right, so but. Either way, we got a gangster, not gangster, ever gangster, but we got hardcore raps, right? Then we got yeah. the reinvention of LL Cool J around a couple of years later, which went into the girls, you feel me, standing on a bus stop, sucking on a lollipop. Like, I knew that bitch. Like, all of us knew her. We, we all knew her. We wanted to fuck her. If you was young, that was the one you wanted, too. So we, he, he recreated himself into that person. And then he continued to do it and do it and do it. Well, <laughs> no pun intended, but <laughs> this is after we got Shark Spin. My hat is like a Shark Spin, which was a fucking takeoff of one of the older songs. And he created a whole new vibe to it. And most of the people that was fans of the new one yeah. was, I believe that was the movie with when his dumb ass was a chef inside with the shark and shit. Most people that was fans of this song didn't even know that was from a line that he said in years prior. Yeah. Then you have the recreation of the Bill calm Bomb is around that same time. The calm, smooth LL. Oh shit, we can't forget father. We can't forget that. I mean, what the fuck? This, his mother shot his father shot his grandfather. Whatever the fuck happened with that story. You feel me? We didn't know none of these things. So we get that. We get the LL Cool J book. We get we get these corny ass in the house shows. Um, all of the movies. I mean watch that show. <laughs> like, right, why wouldn't you? It was a good corny ass show. Maya yeah, Campbell, the chocolate girl back then, was really fine. I used to really. Oh, love yeah, her. she was beautiful. Yeah, you. We won't go there. Wonderful, her. She's going to be great. Um, <laughs> no, she, she probably won't. <laughs> but we get, we're, we're hoping she's going to be great. We hope so. But you get <laughs> that, and then you get the freeze. No, no I'm sorry. We don't even go to freeze. We fucking. Uh, him and fucking what's wife uh, J um, J Lo, we get that recreation. Then we get the Life Jennings recreation on Freeze. Oh, you know, he's literally recreated himself, and with Botox, he has managed to still <laughs> look the fucking same <laughs> while doing these. It, he it's looks not weird, even like man. I, that bo he, it just should make something look weird to me. Got a fake face. So he's he's like managed it. to look younger than he did when he came out as a fucking. Kid. <laughs> this is fucking incredible. That's terrifying. So, <laughs> so we have that, man. And we, I just think what LL contributed to the game, no artist, literally. And again, I'm a Jay-Z fan. If you put Jay up against LL, uh, music-wise, you give me both of their CDs, I'm grabbing the Jay CD. But I have to give it to LL for being the fucking, when he dropped the GOAT, which at that time I felt, was maybe too early. I don't. I don't know if I agreed with it. I think that was like what oh two when he dropped the goat. That's when everybody first probably realized what the fuck the goat mean. He had to write it on the CD. <laughs> like it's all the time. He been out since eighty yeah. five. How's it too early? Yeah, like it was like a 15, 17 year situation. I don't think we was ready to give the because hip hop. I, I don't like the goat conversations because hip hop evolves every ten years anyway. So it's like it's sort of like the LeBron versus Jordan. They didn't play each other. I don't, the fuck, I don't, mm -hmm. how, can they, how can one be better than the other? They didn't play. I mean, the games have completely different, different. You feel me right now? If that's the case, then Drake, sorry, Slankson, is the fucking GOAT. I mean, like, it, everything changes. So it's like. He hung up. 
the six guys will show up, but again, I don't want to take up. I don't want to take up all the time on this, but <laughs> <laughs> on my opinion, man, I L- didn't realize L- it was in an alternate universe. Hell, <laughs> hell has gave the world music, yo. It, it's been a lot of fucking wait, great. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, though. You can't be. Are you serious? You can't be serious. So you, you're disrespecting the greatness of knowledge reign supreme over nearly everyone and what he gave. I would like. I would. All right, all right, he so elevated he, the culture of hip hop and create. I mean, and, and, and formed it as a culture and, and, and taught it almost as a religion to people. I would like to see him as a teacher. I, I don't want to see. Him. He, why? I don't want to see him on stage, though. Why? He's one of the greatest like, live performers if, if of all time. Boxing. What are you talking about? If this was boxing, I would want to see him be Floyd Mayweather's father, and then grab a young dude to be the boxer like Floyd Mayweather. Oh I don't want to. It's something, yo. He's never. It, it doesn't catch me. I've tried over. That's how I felt. Love's gonna get you. Like I've tried over and over and over. And again, that song <laughs> is one of the greatest songs ever made, in my opinion. But it doesn't, yo, it's KRS one. That's why, like how you just now said, you really described it. When they said the top five, and then you was like, well, right now, shit, he's to most people ain't in the top 25. It's true. Because the people country, lack perspective. Niggas are dumb. That's no, why. people lack the backstories that y'all know from a hip hop perspective. Y'all know the backstories of who he contributed to. Y'all know the backstories of what he gave the game. But that shit don't matter if we're just talking about. Album against albums against albums against albums. I will they, argue that other people should I know too. That. I could agree with that. Other people they, should go back stories. They, they should, people should go back and learn I, the I guarantee you, I'll give you right now, I'll give you $20 if you could call any anybody inside the room where you are right now and say, give me two KRS1 albums. There's nobody inside the room where I am right now. <laughs> well, the house, man, all right, I'll give you a lifeline. You got your phone, you on your computer. Call somebody that does not rap. They cannot be rappers and ask them two KRS one albums. They cannot be they so they can't actually rap, but they they're hip hop fans, right? Because I don't I, I can I, can you go call his friend? You know what? Go call a regular damn person. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they may or may not even know who KRS one is, and they know who LL Cool J is because of CSI, whatever the show is. But they don't but, necessarily know two. LL Cool J albums, they can name LL Cool right. J songs, but not the exactly. titles of the album. They can't even name, the average fucking person can't even name fucking KRS-One songs. The average person has nothing to do with who is the better MC. It does. Versus <laughs> that old aspect, that's different. But So what's, 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 what, what are, all right, so we're talking verses. That was the original. We're talking songs. Well, they, well, they, they were mm-hmm. arguing in the verses. But I'm talking I, about, but I, but I want to say, who's KRS- the better MC in general? Who's the better MC? Who's the if better If you're artist? putting down on hip hop, if you're putting down on hip hop, if you're straight talking hip hop, y'all going to say KRS one because he still shows the elements of hip hop. Okay, I got you. Okay. Guess what? The average mm-hmm. listener don't give a what fuck. Talking about that? I mean, <laughs> they're not having a t shirt competition. You know, we're talking about that the hands better <laughs> lyricist. Y'all didn't, that's only one aspect of the five elements. Okay. Wait. So if wait. Wait, 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 wait. That is not my Batman cup. <laughs> Hear me out. That was an incredible doctoral thesis on the life and times of James Todd Smith. Get the book. <laughs> and I would say, as emphatically as I possibly could, are you serious? But I'm not. Because once you got to the end of the thesis, and you stated your Drake evidence, it uh, it all made sense after that. It, it, it all everything you said was contextualized at that point. So you're using so many words I don't know what they mean. That's <laughs> why, and that's like, probably why you don't like Paris. This is probably why but, I don't like Paris. <laughs> but even, even when you're talking about recreation, you know, Karis One went from criminal minded to spiritual minded, if you will. <laughs> like, he, he reinvented not just himself several times, he changed his mind about what he believed several times. Like, he, he's the ultimate contradictor of his own self, Karis One, that is. So, but even if we're talking about the versus battle aspect of it, yes, Jamma made a lot of good points about, you know, LL's 
mass appeal and versatility. You know, even even Jingling Baby, which people remember as a girl joint, it's not. It's a battle track. Like on the it verses, is. he's like ripping in the motherfuckers. Yep. And then even you talk about, you know, the aspect of LL, like incredible the way he, you know he was Tina able to got a big old butt. I'm not different. Told you the the truth. Truth. <laughs> one has never. I can tell by the way his nose is shaped. He has never put his jacket so that his girl could walk over a puddle. <laughs> it just hasn't happened. That, that might be racist, I think. <laughs> or you may be saying he's such a whole tap that he doesn't respect black women. <laughs> like I don't know, but I think that he in the verse the battle, she's, she says black women are the other mother of of the earth. You're the queen of the earth. Hey, you in, the like battle, in the versus battle, you, you don't battle, like me anymore. <laughs> I think that if if, if KRS One waited until the very end to play the bridges over, he might even win the versus battle. He has a lot of hits. That's nostalgia, though. That's that that would be a still nostalgia a hit. win. Am I cool? What are you talking about? Both of them are nostalgia. All that yeah, all be nostalgia. Shit is nostalgia too. No, because both the bridge is over comes with the bridge is over. Year. The bridge, the bridge is over, and I forgot to mention that. But the bridge is over comes with the word hip hop, literally. Right. It's also the definitive destruction of the borough of Queens, and LL is from Queens. So if you waited until the very end to play the record that destroys his borough, he might even win the verses battle. But you know, over other than that, I think LL has an edge in the verses. Was he giving him? Do you think that he was doing great lyricism in the bridge is over for that time period? Yeah. Yes. Get the fuck out of here. What's the yeah. time period? Rap is, I mean, it was like 1986. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Nobody what? even had internal rhymes. The, 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 the thing that made the bridges it over is the thing that made the bridges over what it was was the styling that he used, the way he was putting the, the Jamaican patois in there, and the way he was throwing those rock and roll lines in there. And he was just, you know, he was just styling on you. You know, it I might have I to be always lyrically. Been. It didn't have to be lyrically superb because that's not what a battle is about. Yeah. So I might all right. So all right, that level again, of lyrically superb didn't exist yet. That's when okay. Right. So that's, these are, might be the things. So you guys are helping me. This is why we need more of these conversations. <laughs> all right. When I look at him, his music is not catchy enough. So it has to go the other direction for me. It has to be lyrical as fuck. It, you, it, he misses both of them for me. It's not catchy and it's just not lyrical. It's as not fuck. catchy. KRS so, got some of the most catchiest songs ever. One, two, three. Smart. The crew was called BDP. And if you want to go to the tip top, he got right. some of the catchiest songs some ever. The catchiest hook sound ever. Of, sound of the the I, sound of the police is I like thought, just what he does regularly. He is free, but that crack costs money. Right. Yeah. And, and that might be another thing. You feel me? My lady is Jamaican, which means my, my kids are um, Jamaican. So the Patois and stuff. At that age, I didn't know what the fuck that was. I thought African was Jamaican. I thought they were all the same. C call my ignorance a lot of this shit. <laughs> I mean, this is why knowledge reigns supreme over nearly everybody. <laughs> Listen. He was trying to teach the people. He's trying to teach and liberate the, the mindset of African people. Yeah. Right. You my, must I gotta give credit like, to that. You must my learn. Thing is this, Black and better. I, I, will never go, I, I will never go back at it I mean, on what I'm saying. What I will do is everybody can send me their favorite KRS one song that is not one that everybody knows. And maybe he could get within my top 25. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, man. Well, I'm not I hold nothing you said against you because your your Drake theory therefore conceptualizes and contextualizes everything that you said. Um, because anyone who states that human baby powder is the current goat, then all of that, all of everything else you said, you know, it falls completely yeah. into order. Slingston, I have um Kareem, I think Kareem knows I have a whole anti-fuck Drake movement I had going on years ago for a song that he stole. Or I felt as though he stole. So I'm, it's not even, this shit isn't even like me just being, I'm a Drake you know what I'm saying? Like I, I literally had fuck you Drake songs and was getting hate fucking calls and threats and <laughs> really? all types of lawyers and shit Man. trying to kill me. Wow. Like So it's not <laughs> lawyers trying to kill me. I had a lawyer, I talked to a lawyer about this shit. They like, listen, we work for them. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so, so like at some point, 
in doing this podcast, we we started off in like the Marvel universe and somehow drifted over to like to like Babylon Five or something. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is fucking blown. I don't even want to. I don't want to do any more shows. <laughs> I'm just not. <sighs> Look, I'm not wanna... saying I'm number one. No, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm number one, two, three, four, and five. Like a dope MC <laughs> is a dope MC. What about a record deal? It's like, what are y'all saying? God, a rap. You heard of it? The one who rhymes yeah, to the sky. Give me the airplanes, mad turbulence. Like, wow. Rap tournaments are reign permanent. The number one spot by now. I'm not concerned with it. Of course, if rap, I'm turning it back to that old school way of getting cash money by earning it. <laughs> I was waiting. That shit. I know it's coming. Keep going. I know that's one coming. wins is what I'm saying. Karis wins. Well, somebody play the fucking Nelly track. <laughs> <laughs> Where he this, stole Karis' line for the hook? Yes, that track. I'll, I'll give this to, to Chris, though. He dopes people, no pun intended, into like people who have a higher mainstream platform as, as, than, as him, than him at the time. He'll dope them into into an exchange with him because he knows that's going to get more eyes on him. And that is one of the tactics to how KRS One has stayed relevant decade after decade. Is like so. You, can't if you don't really know me by now. I doubt you ever know me. I never wanted to grab me, won't win a Tony, but I'm not the only MC keeping it real when I grab like smash rap and girls go. How, how can you not like I just don't because everybody like yo, know, you all right. I, this is this the show is over, nigga. I don't want to hear you had the lyrical and then you had the the the, the non-lyrical and it it just throws it out there to the one that everybody was doing. The, the shit that I hear KRS One doing is shit that I could freestyle and do, and it just never was right. It, it's, it's the it's the content though. It's it's the level of topic, the topical nature of what he's talking about that takes it to another level. But we got to get out of here. This is uh, they're about to end this shit. I'm I'm highly frustrated. I think. Subscribe to the Cars Face Up podcast. God damn it. Cars Face Up, Kareem Ali TV. Are you serious, podcast? Are you serious? Seriously disturbed. Mad serious. So I have to stand here today as what I was when I was born, a black man. Your racism bounces off me, I'm bulletproof. Your prejudice gets deflected, I'm bulletproof. Your hatred can't penetrate me, I'm bulletproof. Our minds can't be shackled no more, nah, we know the truth. Yeah, from the spot that Malcolm stood.